In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Modular Grid to plan your very first Eurorack setup. So if you're not familiar with Modular Grid, it's a very simple website that serves a crucial aspect of the whole Eurorack modular rig planning process. Previously, people would have to do this stuff with pen and paper or in Excel. But with Modular Grid, you can plan it all with a drag and drop GUI interface right from your browser, no software or anything. You just modulargrid.net. I'm a lot of link in the description so you can check it out. This is my rack that's over here. This this thing right here. And so this having a tool like this to plan out where your modules are is insanely useful in organizing everything and making it as useful as possible and also kind of knowing what to buy and if everything fits the power requirements and space requirements of what you want. And so it's incredibly useful when you're planning out your first case for, for several reasons that I'm going to go through. So, so this is essentially everything here and up is this case. And then I even kind of bundled some of the other racks that I have around just to have an easy way to organize everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an entire rack from scratch. And before that, I just want to mention that I do have a blog post that you can check out below, how to get started with your rack, if you want some kind of background information for everything we're going to be talking about in this video, um, or check out YouTube. There's a whole bunch of great information on YouTube as well. But I did write a pretty detailed article <laughs> with a glossary as well, if you're confused. So what we're going to do is we are going to do edit and new rack. Now, you do have to make an account, but you can make a free account. They do have a premium account, which I do have, but you don't need it. You only need it if you have like a ridiculously big case, like I do. <laughs> so we're just gonna, I'll just leave the default name, my stumpy your rack, and I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I would just start planning with two rows, 84 HP. Rows are essentially how many rows of modules you have. And HP is the width. Um, HP stands for horizontal pitch, just how wide of, of modules do you have. Don't worry about when you tiles unless you know you need that. Now, usually people use this most commonly for your rack, but it does support a bunch of other modular formats like Bukla, Frack Rack, Surge 500 series, um, and other stuff too. So even guitar pedals, which is actually pretty neat. So I'm just gonna click save here. We have the default layout. You can always go back to edit edit rack and we could change the look of it. I'll go with dope fur style and you could change the rows and HP. But now we have an empty rack and what we need to do is start filling it up with stuff. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And one thing that you're probably gonna want again, check that, that thing if you're still trying to plan your case and you have no idea what kind of your rack you wanna build because you could build a synthesizer, a mono synthesizer, polyphonic synthesizer, ambient noise machine or a drum sequencer synthesizer machine. Um, I was gonna build kind of like a mono synth because it's kind of probably the most beginner friendly, easy to understand structure. One great thing about Modular Grid is you can just sort by popularity, which is relatively good starting point for most people. Uh, Platts is a fantastic, great priced macro oscillator. It's just an oscillator that makes a bunch of different sounds from plucks to sawtooths to sine waves to chords. Um, so I'm just going to click this plus button here. I'll zoom in so you can see this a little better. You do get some information here. 12 HP, that's how wide the module is, what categories it falls in. You can also click on the name of a module or this little I, and you get a product breakdown, the price, some places you can go buy it, um, power requirements of it as well. Um, I'll just go back. Let's flip back to popular. Zoom in a bit, and if I just click this plus button, you see it just get added to the rack. Easy as that. So now we have our oscillator here. And if you're struggling, like, you know you need, for example, a filter, one very easy thing you can do is go to function, look for filter, sort by popularity, and now you have some filters. Now, not all of these will be filters. Like, this is an entire synthesizer. It just happens to have a filter. But this can kind of give you some ideas for where to start your researching if you're still struggling. Like, I know I need a filter, what are some common popular filters? <laughs> um, Dopefer, I don't have this one. Um, I have the QPOS, but that's more of a niche filter. Um, but this is a really pretty damn cheap, $110, which is quite cheap for a Eurorack module in general. I'm just going to click plus. Now we have a filter. I'll just organize some stuff like this. Now you know you're going to need a VCA at some point, so you can go down here and click VCA and sort by popular again. This hat is actually, I think I have three of these just because they're so handy. They're pretty affordable per VCA. Again, if you don't know what VCA is, it's how you control the volume of your oscillator. 
it'll add that in. Because essentially what we're doing here is our, your oscillator makes notes. Those notes are going into the filter and you can filter the frequency of them. The filter is going into the VCA, which is going to be what controls the volume. But now we need some kind of tool to control how the volume changes. Is it a pluck sound? Is it a long decaying sound? Does it kind of slowly ramp up and slowly go down? And for that, essentially we need an envelope. So I can go in here and I can look for envelope generator, short sort by popular. And I'm just going to choose maths. It's one of the most overly recommended modules. It serves a bunch of purposes. It's a great module to get from the start um, because you'll always find a use for it and you'll kind of constantly learn stuff about it. So now we have maths. I'm just going to throw it down here just because usually I like to use, you know, you, we're using the envelope to control this, but it's not in the signal path. No audio is passing through this if we're using it as an envelope generator, but it's controlling this VCA and perhaps, perhaps even this filter as well. Now, you probably want some way to like choose what notes you're playing on here. And so we could go in here and we could look for sequencer. Sequencer just generates notes essentially. And there's a billion you know, options. There's 820 modules in here that can generate sequences. And some of these each, they each have their own purposes, right? And their own price points. This thing here is very often used as a modulation source. But something like pressure points is pretty fun. It takes up not too, too much space compared to the Reen or Renee MK2 or MK1, but it doesn't have as much function. So I'm just going to add that here. Uh, obviously, you'd want to do research into these modules. And if you wanted to use, you know, you wouldn't know this right off the bat, but if you wanted to use pressure points as a sequencer, you would want the brains for it, which is just another module that comes along with that. So if I'll move this... Uh, down here, we probably want this because we're touching it at the bottom of our rack. Then we have our envelope follower. And now we have like a, an entire signal path, right? Like we can generate notes to control the oscillator, filter that sound, send it to a VCA, and then control the volume. We need a way to output the sound. And so there is a way in here where you could go to, um, I'll have to zoom out a little bit so you can see it. I forget what they call it but I think it is not power preamp, perhaps. Turn off the brains filter, Short sort by popular. And now we get external input envelope follower. You could use some of these modules as an audio output module. Um, I'm actually just gonna search for something that I know that I have, um, and that is the audio IO by IntelliJ. And there's, again, there's even in here, there's a bunch of modules. And actually, it's not even coming up, the one I'm thinking of. Audio I, Audio Interface 2. So that this is one of the ones that I have. Yeah, don't worry too much about it. But now we have an entire kit, right? And we could flesh this out a whole bunch of ways. We could add effects modules to it. We could add a second oscillator. We could add a real sequencer. But again, this all depends on what you're trying to do with your system. We just programmed a very basic... Uh, monophonic synthesizer that can generate an oscillator and filter it. it. It's very basic, right? But the reason why I went through all that trouble is because we have a functional synthesizer here with plenty of room to expand. So if, if you like, you can plan your kit like this, and then you can see what size rack you need, and you want to provide room for future growth. And we can see right under here what our power requirements are. So if you buy a case, just make sure it has everything that you need in terms of power requirements. Usually plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts, and plus 5 volts. And you should be fine nowadays. But also depth. So the maximum depth of the module is 45 millimeters. If you added, for example, the ES9, which is a fantastic module, it's kind of like a, a multi-channel audio interface for your Eurorack, it also cost $635. But now our depth is 50 millimeters. So if you have what's known as a skiff case, um, wish I had one handy, but they're like this thick. And uh, if you have a 25 or 50 millimeter module, it might fit in the case, but it might not be able to be plugged into the case just because the cable adds a little more height. This one does not fit in my IntelliGel 1U case, but it fits fine in my fancy case for lake case that I have right up there somewhere over there, <laughs> but if it's fine, because the depth on this case 
ranges from about, you know, three, four inches to like a foot, depending on what part of the case you're in. So you want to make sure that you check your depth, but you also get your price, the number of modules, and you can even click this data sheet here to see the individual breakdowns for each, each module, right, which is pretty handy. And so with that said, we've planned our case and I Okay, there we go, everything back. I thought everything deleted itself for a sec. But now you have your case, you know your budget. You could go try to hunt down these modules, try to look on Reverb or eBay and try to find some used prices and go start buying stuff. You can find a case that meets all these requirements and you're good to roll. And then you can just save your case like this. And one thing that I like to do when I'm planning it is like make one of these that's like your case. And then when you're looking to expand it, you can just do edit duplicate rack and then now you can play around in this clone of your case and see what works in terms of layout like maybe you prefer to have this over here and you put something else here or maybe you like having your oscillators on the left or maybe you don't want your signal path to run left or right you want it to do right to left or whatever you want right it's all up to you but you can make as many of these racks as you want i think in the free plan you're limited to 10 um when you if you do the paid plan you have 100 which is even 10 is kind of overkill. Um, but that's the entirety of Modular Grid. It's a very simple website, super easy uh, to plan out your rack and saves a lot of problem points when you go to actually buy your stuff and buy your cases and avoid a very expensive mistake. So again, if you want to learn more about your rack, uh, you can check out this video right here that I did, kind of doing an introduction basics of it. And you can also check that blog post I did in the description if you want to learn more and kind of go through a reading format as opposed to a video format. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. Bye.